In section 4.7, we will talk about different types of variation between variables. First, let's talk about direct variation. Direct variation occurs between variables when we can model the situation as the equation f of x equals a constant k times x. We can also write this as y is equal to k times x. K is a positive constant, which we'll call the variation constant or the constant of proportionality. And we say that y varies directly as x. So this equation, y equals k times x, is to be derived anytime we see this language, y varies directly as x. There's another type of variation called inverse variation. Here we have the equation y equals k divided by x, and the verbiage here is that y varies inversely as x. Notice that in both equations for direct and for inverse variation, the constant k is in the numerator. It's only the variable x that changes location. There are other types of variation that are all called combined variation. For a statement that reads, y varies directly as the nth power of x, first we see the word directly, which says that x to the nth power should stay in the numerator. So we'll model this as y equals k times x to the nth power. If we instead saw y vary inversely as the nth power of k, the word inversely tells us that that power will need to be in the denominator. So we'll model this with the equation y equals k over x to the nth power. Again, keep in mind that even when there's inverse variation, the variation constant k remains in the numerator. Finally, we have joint variation. We can say that y varies jointly as x and z, or there could be more variables. It doesn't have to be just two. But varying jointly is a type of direct variation. It's direct variation with more than one variable. So to say that y varies jointly as x and z is going to be written as y equals k times x times z. So again, the word jointly says that we have direct variation with the product of multiple variables. Let's look at some examples and hopefully you'll appreciate that the mechanical work for these problems is actually quite simple and straightforward. You just have to be careful with translating the situation to the correct equation. In the first example, we have m varies directly as p. This will be modeled by the equation m equals k times p. Now we're told that m equals 30 when p equals 6. So let's make those substitutions here. m is 30 when p is 6. So we can actually solve for the variation constant k by dividing both sides by 6. We get that k is equal to 5. So that will be our variation constant. And we can put together the equation of variation by going back to our original equation and now substituting 5 for k. So we have m is equal to 5 times p. In the next example, we're told that way, uh, not way, y varies inversely as x. y varies inversely as x. So we'll write this as y is equal to k divided by x. Next, we're told that y is equal to 30 when x is equal to 4. So let's make those substitutions. We see here that to solve for k, we can multiply both sides by 4, and we get that k is equal to 120. So that will be our variation constant. To find the equation of variation, we'll go back to our original statement, and we'll substitute 120 for k. 
So we'll get that y is equal to 120 divided by x. Next, we're told that y varies inversely as the square of x. So this is a type of combined variation. y varies inversely means that x squared, or the square of x, will be in the denominator. We're also told that y is equal to 7 when x is equal to 9. So we have that 7 is equal to k divided by 81. Multiplying both sides by 81 gives us that k is equal to 567. That will be our constant of variation. To get the equation of variation, we'll go back to our original statement and substitute 567 for k. So we'll have that y is equal to 567 divided by x squared. Next we have that s varies directly as the square of t. That means that s is going to equal k times the square of t. We're told that s is equal to 729 when t is equal to 9. So that means that 729 is equal to 81k. Dividing both sides by 81 gives us that k is equal to 9. So the variation constant is k equals 9. The equation of variation, we'll go back to our first statement, and we'll substitute 9 for k. We have that s is equal to 9 times t squared. Next, we have that y varies jointly as x and z. Remember that joint variation is a type of direct variation with multiple variables. So we will write that y is equal to k times x times z. y is equal to 50 when x is equal to 5 and z is also equal to 5. So we have that 50 is equal to 25 times k, which gives us that k must equal 2. So our variation constant is that k equals 2. The equation of variation can be found by going back to our first statement and substituting 2 for k. So we have that y is equal to 2 times x times z. Now we have that y varies inversely as x. So that means that y must equal to k divided by x. We're also told that y is equal to 11 when x is equal to 8. Multiplying both sides by 8 will give us our variation constant k is equal to 88. That means that our equation of variation is that y is equal to 88 divided by x. But we have one additional instruction. We need to find the value of y when x is 10. Well, now that we have the equation of variation, we can substitute 10 for x and find the corresponding y value. So to answer this question, we'll say that y is equal to 88 divided by 10 or that y is equal to 8.8. Next we have that if y varies directly as x, so if y is equal to k times x, and we're told that y is equal to 7 when x is 6, Dividing both sides by 6 gives us that the variation constant k is equal to the fraction 7 over 6, which means that our equation of variation is y equals 7 over 6 times x. The additional instructions tell us to find the value of y when x is 12. 
So we can substitute 12 for x into the equation and say that y is equal to 7 divided by 6 times 12 for x, which becomes y equals 14. Next, we have a simple word problem. We're told that the water pressure on a scuba diver is directly proportional to the depth of the river. So I'm going to use the letter P for pressure and the letter D for depth, although any variables will do. Pressure is directly proportional to depth, so P must equal K times D. If the pressure on a diver is 13.5, when she is 30 feet below the surface, we can write this as 13.5 equals K times 30. Dividing both sides by 30 will give us that K is equal to 0 0.45. That means that the equation of variation will be P equals 0 0.45 times D. We need to know the depth of this scuba diver when the pressure is 22.5. So now we can substitute 22.5 for P and solve for the depth of D. Dividing both sides by 0.45 gives us that D is equal to 50 feet. Finally, we're told that the length of a simple pendulum varies directly with the square of its period. So I'm going to use L for length and P for period. We can write this as length equals K times P squared. If the pendulum has a length of 2.25 and a period of 3 seconds, we are asked how long the pendulum will be when the period is 10 seconds. So let's go ahead and solve for k by using the first pair of clues. We're told that the length is 2.25 when the period is 3. So 2.25 is equal to 9 times k, and dividing both sides by 9 gives us that k is 0.25. That means that the equation of variation is that the length is equal to 0 0.25 times the square of the period. Now we have to find the length of the pendulum when the period is 10. So we'll substitute 10 for P and solve for L. So L will equal 0 0.25 times 10 squared, which is 0 0.25 times 100. So the length will be 25 exactly. Let me fix that.